welcome to Science with Go. I'm JR Genex Arminian. In this lesson, we are going to answer the essential question, how did early scientists like Newlands, Meyer, and Mendeleev organize the elements if not all of them had been discovered during their time? Let's start by taking a look at a set of cards with different shapes, quantities, and shades. You can print out the cards yourself from this blog entry and try the activity yourself. Your task is to arrange the cards in a grid with columns and rows. You could have arranged the cards this way, with no specific logical pattern. But that doesn't seem helpful to us. It looks confusing, and it doesn't really tell us anything. Let's try rearranging the cards by putting similar shapes together, similar quantities together, and similar shades together. Now this looks better, and seems more organized, but there seems to be some inconsistencies. It feels like there may be some cards missing. Could you tell what's missing from this arrangement? What if we left some empty spaces for those missing cards in the grid? Are they easily identifiable now? Now let's see if your guesses are the same as mine. Of course, if the cards are arranged in this way, it would be easy to identify the missing elements of the grid. You notice that single shapes are at the top, double shapes are in the middle, and triple shapes are on the bottom. You will also notice that there seems to be a repeating trend as you go across the grid. It repeats from black to gray to white. The number of shapes increases from 1 to 3 down a column, and the trend repeats on the next column. This activity mirrors the problem that Dmitry Mendeleev had in the 1860s, and his efforts to organize the known elements into a logical tabular format. In the early 1860s, scientists like Newlands and Meyer both published periodic tables that organized the elements, but looked a lot like our first two attempts of our activity. Mendeleev's genius was to realize that there might be elements that haven't been discovered yet, and so he left empty spaces for them in his table. Here's a picture of his work. He was able to predict the chemical and physical properties of these undiscovered elements, as you can see with atomic mass number 44, atomic mass number 68, and atomic mass 72, which turned out to be quite accurate. These elements later were named scandium, gallium, and germanium. Today's modern periodic table doesn't have any empty spaces to fill, except for the largest atoms. Scientists are still attempting to form larger elements by combining smaller atoms together. But it is the periodic table's organization of the elements that highlights its usefulness. Elements with similar characteristics are found within a column or a group. The periodic table also shows repeating patterns and trends as you go from top to bottom and from left to right, much like the card set that we correctly put together. In the next unit, we will identify what these trends are as we go deeper into the study of the elements. See you in class.